I'm Lima Milan. In this video, we're going to look at creative use of Ableton Live's Impulse device. So the history of Impulse is it's one of Ableton Live's first actual MIDI devices. It's a, it's a typical sample-based, what could be a drum machine or a sample launcher. Um, so if I load up uh, an example of Impulse, as I say, it's one of the oldest devices. So it's often overlooked these days because it, it's been superseded by drum racks by a long shot. And of course, we've got Sampler and Simpler as uh, very advanced ways of manipulating samples. But there are a couple of interesting creative ways you can use this device that might make you reach for it to come up with some interesting ideas. So that's, that's what we're going to focus on here. So there are eight slots available. And you drag and drop whatever audio you want onto each one of these slots. The uh, sample can be launched by the, the play button. They can be muted with a mute button here and a solo button is here. And we've got the traditional hot swap button, which means you can go to the library and load or swap out a sound that's already loaded into there. The um, ways we can manipulate each one of these samples changes when you click on each one. So if I deliberately go to the second slot and change the decay, you'll see that the parameters are unique across all of these options here per slot as we go through. So to give you an example of kind of how it works and also how we can creatively use it, I'm going to load in just this uh, simple bell sound that I've got here and just do a very quick sequence. So we launch that. All right, so we have a start time, which is non-visual. We have no visual aid like we have in the other sample devices in uh, live. But we can change the start position. So a very quick and easy way to just quickly get the transient uh, sort of bypassed on samples. Quite good for getting more clicky start points. Um, but we've also got a soft control to just soften the attack stage. And again, you know, it's a classic machine. It doesn't have the same level of detail. So it's, it's a soft button. It either is correct for the sound or it's not, or you can change the start position. We've got transposition and we've got stretch. Now, the stretch thing is quite unique because the stretch can be changed for each instance of a note. So it's, it's a little bit different to the way that uh, devices like Simpler can work. Um, and this is one of the creative applications here. We've got some very quick ways of making these things behave in interesting manners. So if I go to my sequence, and if I actually, let's just uh, Command and A to highlight it all, hold Alt and drag. I want to make a running 16ths pattern. And I'm going to use the actual variation option that we have, where if we hold Command, we can change quite how far the velocity range can go. So it's like a a randomization aspect. So it's adding some randomization into the velocity as it plays round. So if I press play now, the velocity to amplitude is already set on uh, impulse, so it will change in volume. Okay, so the assignment is velocity here, 70% controls the volume control. So I can change the manual volume control here, I can change the pan, I can change the decay of the sample. We also change it to be trigger or gate mode. So gate mode means that it will last for as long as the MIDI note actually lasts for, and when the MIDI note ends, it ends. Or trigger mode, which means that it launches the sample and it just lasts the duration of the sample and the decay setting here as well. Um, so let's have a look at some of these creative aspects. So I've clearly made a velocity variation. So it's randomizing the velocities now as it plays. Um, and now I'm going to go for some more custom applications of what velocity can be modulating, what can it change the properties of. So the transposition is an interesting one. So firstly, of course, you can, as with any sample, explore the possibilities with the sound by just changing the transposition in general. So let's find an interesting place for this uh, sample. Okay, I like the pitch that's coming across. It's quite melodic. And then we have two options below. So we've got velocity, which, as you hopefully will guess, is basically the velocity can change the pitch. Now, it's not an exact science, so this is where the interesting sort of outcomes can happen. If we just actually sort of audition, listen as we change this, we can find an interesting relationship of 
the tuning that I've set it to using transposition and then how far away from the tuning velocity can uh, be. Now, if I'm programming in the velocities, I can, of course, exact or tune uh, the velocity values so they're exact and pitch can be portrayed. And maybe you'd use it that way to create an actual musical you know, idea, something with a, a traditional tuned melody line. Um, but velocity is interesting, especially when we've got the randomization aspect enabled for velocity, that we can get some more unexpected results. So I'll, I'll play it and I'll just change the velocity value as it plays. Okay, now taking the velocity off again, on the transposition control, we can go for a random mode. So rather than velocity being the randomizer in this case, we can have a general randomization. Which of course is similar. It's doing the same thing. It's randomizing one velocity value um, or one transposition value from one strike of a note to the next. Um, but the next manipulation option that we have here, which is the stretch mode, is this um, alterable time stretch from one note played to the next. And that doesn't have the randomization option, that has the velocity value. So the reason why I, I lend myself to clicking on velocity first to get this kind of behavior out of transpose is that I couple it with, with the time stretch function as well. And as you see, the, the time stretch function only has a velocity as a, as a modulator. So let's go for stretch. Now, if I just move stretch, it's a static position so I can demonstrate what it sounds like especially if I allow the decay to let the time stretch be heard. Especially if we go higher, so it's um, very speed the way that the uh, sampler works. It's, it's a classic sampler, so the higher the samples play back, the shorter it is and the higher in pitch it is. So I'm going higher in pitch right now, so I know the original sample playback is short, but then that will sort of accentuate how much time stretching has to happen to make it a longer sample now. Um, so we'll really hear the time stretching algorithm kicking in. All right, so that's a static time stretch, but we have a mode here as well, and it's a different type of algorithm for time stretching. So we should hear a difference. Okay, so that's static. It's not dynamic at the moment, it's just the same time stretch. So this is where the interesting results really start to happen. So I'll, I'll set them to zero for a start. Now the, the velocity value um, in terms of transposition goes up. So we can take it from its current position and make it go up. The time stretch is different. It's a bipolar assignment, so it can go up and down. So I can have time stretch set to a high value and have velocity make it go to a shorter value with higher velocity uh, values or the opposite, which I, I tend to go for because it makes sense that things are more uh, obvious as you strike them hard and they become more accented. Uh, but it is a, it's an option there. You can change which direction the actual velocity modulates the time stretch. So I'm going to set the velocity quite high, keep time stretch in the middle so the velocity is pulling that uh, time stretch value up. Okay, so let's try some velocity to pitch as well. Okay, so that's that's an interesting discordant sounding kind of haunting percussive um, motion that's happening with impulse at the moment. So other aspects we've got in terms of ways of manipulating each one of these sample cells is we've got a drive control. Just watch your actual volume output at the same time. Again, very simple, either on or it's not. And then if we go across, you can see we've got a filter section and we've got velocity to filter as well. So these are not necessarily all unique to impulse, um, but they're very quick to get to with impulse. So sometimes this is going to feel a little bit more immediate to be able to modify just a sample or two in a way that might give you some interesting results. So I'm just going to pull the filter down and have the velocity pull the filter up.
So I'm just modifying it as I'm hearing it, trying to figure out you know, how long the sample is its lowest value, how long the sample is its highest value, what mode the time stretch is set to, what sounds best now that I've obviously modified filter settings, transposition, and so on as well. So it's a push and pull relationship between all these parameters until you feel that you've got something that's got some substance to it. So let's have a look at this part here, which is velocity to volume as we already covered, but we've got velocity to pan too, and we've got randomization for pan. So we can you know, make it randomize pan to quite an extreme uh, standard. gives it a nice sense of stereo. And of course, we've got the randomization control as well. So the final part in terms of the main parameters is a volume, time control, and a transposition. And that's going to modify all sample cells and their properties as well. So not too dissimilar from the time control on operator, for instance, where all envelopes will be stretched or condensed uh, with one dial. So really good from going from a good solid uh, main sound and be able to just immediately pull it in two different directions as you as you want to for variation. That's impulse in its first instance. So we're using it in its classic kind of uh, scenario where it's on its own. When you start taking that approach and you start then layering these different behaviors and different randomize, randomization aspects of impulse, it really starts to get interesting. So. We can do that quite easily by duplicating the track and, and having it um, run through in different instances. We can also have multiple samples in that single impulse. The negatives of that is that the impulse is just output into a stereo mix. It's only outputting all eight sounds to the same uh, stereo output on impulse, and then we can only deal with it as a stereo file. Again, because impulses of the older generation with how Ableton Live's workflow is has been and then it's, it's changed over the years. If you want to have the individual outs of impulse run to different tracks so they can be treated differently and so on, uh, something we take for granted with drum racks because a drum rack can be a sample for every single drum cell and we just drag whatever processing we want on each individual cell. If you want something similar to that, one way to do it is you, let's say impulse, let's label as track, in, impulse sample two and you tell that track to listen to impulse and then the next choose a menu will give you a choice of the sample so you can have it come out onto a separate track if we set that to monitor in and of course sequence that second sample cell so very simply have created a scenario where the main output of impulse is still where all but the second sample uh, cell is going to, um, but now that sample two is, or the sample cell two, is running to this second audio track and running separately. We can treat it different. I've just given it reverb just to demonstrate that process. But that's the old workflow with Ableton Live because this device is old, so it's pretty time consuming to do that. You could, of course, have that saved in a template and so on, but I would recommend a different strategy. So let's go for a drum rack instead. And instead, let's have that impulse now dragged over to that drum rack and stick it on whichever starting point you want, whichever pad you want. And I'll just drag that MIDI clip over and just grab all the content for that C3-based pattern and put that on the actual correct um, lane for that cell there, which is a C1 cell, because it's the first default bottom left cell that you see in a drum rack. So we've got exactly the same scenario as we had before. Difference is now we can alt and drag, create a second instance of exactly that same setup. I think um, what we'll do as well is customize that one a little bit more. So go back to the first cell. That was the one that was quite randomized on this one. Let's tune this one differently. Give it some different randomization in terms of the velocity values different drive, different filter, and just make it more bespoke. So there's another sonic state that that idea can run to. So if I do duplicate a few times, we don't need that other MIDI part now. Go to, let's say every 
fourth beat every two bars and we just use the arrows and put that up into the other instance of uh, impulse we'll now have a bit more motion between my initial idea and the second version of that idea that I've modified just by I at this stage. Um, and it just immediately takes what could be an interesting first idea using those quick and easy controls and impulse to, to create some randomness and, and play around with velocity values and so on, and then give it another place to go to, to get more out of that idea. And as I mentioned before, the beauty of the drum rack workflow is, of course, we can very easily just load in anything that we, we want to do to further sort of run with the individuality of one copy of that impulse. And the, the next to so this one is now going to, well, it's actually going to be a 10 second reverb in this case. Again, doing it by an idea of what I think will work, but I'm just playing around with these devices for a quick demonstration here. So I could extend that idea further, of course, duplicating other impulses or starting off with another impulse as well. In this video, we've had a look at the classic impulse device in Ableton Live and also the unique creative ways we can set it up to start some new ideas that might have potential and then also how we can have a best workflow for handling those ideas to get more variation.